to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the ethiopian eunuch said see here is water what hinders me from being baptized. Acts chapter 8, verse number 36. Implied from the question by the eunuch is that one must be prepared to be baptized. And so today, we want to think about who is a candidate to be baptized. Is anybody who just walks up off the street a candidate? Is an atheist or agnostic a candidate to be baptized? What about a, a young child? When are they ready? to be baptized. Stay tuned as we're going to consider what God says on the subject of who is a candidate to be baptized. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website or you can call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. Who's ready to be baptized? Is just anybody off the street who comes up and says, I'm ready to be baptized, really ready to be baptized? Can you then take somebody off the street who knows nothing about Christ and, and dunk them in water and that be baptism? What about somebody who's living an, an immoral lifestyle? Maybe somebody who's a murderer and who's never changed his mind on that. Maybe somebody who's robbed a bank and who's living it up off the funds and, and is still living in sin. Is that person a candidate to be baptized? What about a, a young child? At what point does a person become ready to obey the gospel? Is just knowing the facts, uh, the five steps in the plan of salvation and who Jesus is, does that qualify one to be baptized? These are the questions we're going to consider today from the Word of God and think about who is really ready to be baptized. Brent, it's true that sometimes people who are not good candidates, who weren't ready, have been baptized. Maybe, for example, a young child saw a brother or sister who was ready obey the gospel, and then he thinks, well, I may as well do that as well. Hadn't really thought about it before. Maybe he isn't to that maturity point. Maybe even doesn't understand fully, but brother or sister done it, and they got a lot of praise, and so he does it as well. Is that person really ready to obey the gospel? Maybe a young person does it to be like other people. Maybe he wants to be like his parents. Maybe he wants to be like some other friend he saw, and so he says, hmm, I think I'll obey the gospel too. Was he really ready to obey? That's a serious commitment. Was he ready to do that? You know, sometimes I've seen this happen in my own life. You've got a 
large group of kids at camp, and hey, camp's a good thing. Learning the Bible is a good thing. Teaching them the gospel is a good thing. But you've got a large group of kids at camp, and maybe one or two who are really ready do obey the gospel, and that causes a domino effect. Were the rest of those really ready? Maybe they were. Or maybe it was just they wanted to do, peer pressure, they wanted to do what others were doing as well. And then I've seen situations like this of people who maybe weren't quite ready to obey the gospel, but pressure caused them to. Maybe you've got a husband or a wife who's a Christian. And maybe that husband or that wife, to make their spouse happy, says, I think I'll obey the gospel and I'll make my wife really happy. Well, were they really ready? Were they doing it for the right motive? Did they understand what they needed to do to become a Christian? You know, when we think about who's ready to obey the gospel and who is a proper candidate to submit to Christ's teaching on baptism, let's ask some questions that we really need to consider relating to this subject. Number one, what is faith? Is faith something that is essential to obey the gospel? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. And the Scripture says, without faith, it's impossible to please God, Hebrews 11, verse 6. I must have faith in Christ. I must believe to be baptized, Mark 16, 16. And so if faith is hearing the Word of God and having a conviction and belief in Jesus, then friend, that's something the individual has to possess. He has to read the Bible for himself. He has to study the Scriptures. He has to develop his own conviction based on the Word of God. And it can't be just because somebody said so or somebody else wanted you to or because of pressure or trying to please others. I've got to have, one's got to have his own faith in Christ. A second question to consider is, what is baptism? Does a person understand the correct mode of baptism? Do they understand what baptism is for? Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, verse 32. Have they been taught on the subject of baptism? Do they understand its importance? Do they understand the commitment and the change that one is making in their life? If not, then friend, they're not yet a candidate to obey the gospel. A third question to consider. What does it mean to repent? Now, here's how that relates to baptism. The Bible teaches that repentance precedes baptism. Remember Acts 2 verse 38? They were told when they wanted to know what can we do to overcome the sin of killing our Messiah? Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Acts 2 verse 38. Does a person understand what it means to repent? You know, sometimes I, I think people don't because they're, they're baptized and that's all good and well, they think, and then right back to living the same way. And maybe they did, but maybe they weren't taught that repentance means I've got to turn from sin. Repentance means I've got to do my best not to go back into that lifestyle, and it's something necessary before baptism occurs. Another question to consider. Before one obeys the gospel, the question needs to be addressed, how do you intend to live your life differently? Romans 6 verse 4 says this, When we come out of the waters of baptism, we're raised to walk in newness of life. How's this going to change your life? What are you going to do differently? Are you going to talk the same? Are you going to act the same? Are you going to be involved in the same things? Or is there going to be a, a genuine change in one's life that's evident by all who see them? Another question to consider, and this is especially true as it relates to young people. You know, sometimes I talk to people who may, as we mentioned, see a brother or sister who is ready, obey the gospel, and maybe this child is five or six or seven, and they say, you know, I think I need to be baptized too. Well, let's ask them this. What is sin? And have you ever sinned? And do you realize right now, do you understand that without Christ, you are lost. They may have a, an idea of what sin is, but do they understand the, the consequences and the gravity of it? Are they able to distinguish between good and evil? And do they have that maturity that goes along with that as well? You know, I remember talking to a young person one time, and he wanted to be baptized, and so I said, Did, are you saved right now? He said, well, sure. 
well, wait a minute now. If, if we don't understand, hey, I've sinned, that's personal, I'm lost, I need Jesus to overcome the sin problem, and friend, we're not yet to the point where we're ready to obey God's plan of salvation. A third question or another question to ask is, why do you want to be baptized? Well, I saw my brother do it, or I saw a friend do it, or it'll make my wife happy. No, I want to be baptized because I realize I cannot contact the soul-saving blood of Jesus without it. Romans 6 verses 2 through 4. I want to be baptized to obey Christ, to commit my life a hundred percent to Him, Luke 9, 23, and so that I can be faithful unto death. And one day I'll receive the crown of life, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10. You know, another question we ought to ask is, why did Jesus die on the cross? Are you lost at this time? What does it mean to, to really be lost? And do we understand the seriousness of that commitment? Uh, when we think about obedience to the gospel, we want to ask, do you understand the steps in the plan of salvation? Uh, have you heard the word of God? You've got to have the, the understanding, the intellect, and the maturity to process the gospel message. Once you've heard that, do you believe it? Do you really believe and are you willing to make a lifelong commitment until death that Jesus is the Savior? Are you willing to repent? Would you stand before others and make the good confession? And are you going to be baptized into Christ for the remission of one's sins? And so, leading up to baptism, there are some things that one seriously needs to consider before he's a candidate to be baptized. Now, let's talk about some of the qualities that are necessary, some traits or characteristics or qualities that are necessary to obey the gospel. One for sure is that of maturity. Is the individual who is considering obedience to the gospel mature enough to make that decision? And here's what we mean by maturity. In Romans 7, 1 through 4, there is an illustration used unto which my relationship with Christ is like, and that is of marriage. Is this person ready to enter into a serious commitment to Christ like unto marriage? Are they ready to make that type of of commitment. You know, just because somebody reaches the age of puberty, reaches the age of puberty, doesn't mean they're ready to be married. Married just because somebody turns 16 doesn't mean they're ready to get their driver's license. Just because one may turn the legal age of 18 doesn't mean he's mature enough to join the military. And so just because, you know, certain factors may be there, the maturity also has to be there. You may have a, a young man who's 18 years old and has never had much responsibility, never had much uh, training in that. Are you going to take that 18-year-old person and say, you're 18, go join the army? Well, maybe, but he's likely not mature enough to really follow through with that decision. And so, you know, one has to reach a maturity level where some of these things are necessary, where I'm ready to make a lifelong daily commitment to put the Lord first. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. You've got to be ready to make a commitment that I'm going to be ready if I'm called upon to die for the Lord. Revelation 2, 10, Be faithful until death. I'll give you the crown of life. Friend, during the times of the first century, when someone became a Christian, that was a, a very serious commitment because the knock may have come on the door. Are there any Christians here? And if you raised your hand and you signified you were, you could be put in jail and you could be killed for that. Are you ready to die for your convictions to Christ? Is this person ready to be convicted of sin and the consequences that go along with that when we fail to follow Christ and His teaching. Now, another question to consider, and this directly relates to someone who may be of the right age or maturity level, and that is, is the person, is this person accountable at the age, what we think of as the age of being accountable for their own actions? Now, let's understand, there's a time when children are not saved, but safe. And here's what we mean by that. 
Jesus said this, Bring the little children to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. There's an age and point in time when little children are pure and innocent, and their characteristics and qualities are clearly identifiable of someone in the kingdom. They're safe in the arms of God. Ezekiel 28 verse 15, God says to the king of Tyre, you were perfect in all your ways from the day you were created until, adverb of time, iniquity was found in you. There was a point in time when the king of Tyre was pure and innocent and right in the sight of God until he became accountable for his own actions. Now, we know that adults, those who've reached the age of accountability, they do have to give an account of their actions. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for the things done in the body. And so we ask the question, where does the scripture teach that there is that age of being safe and there is that age of accountability? The passage is found in Isaiah chapter 7, and I want to direct your attention to Isaiah chapter 7, and I want you to notice what God says in verse number 16. Listen to these words in Isaiah 7, verse number 16. The scripture says, For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, God says the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. Now, God's making a prophecy there about what's going to happen to the land and to the kings who are going to take it over, but I want you to listen to these words again. God says there is a time before which a child knows to refuse evil and choose good. When we say age of accountability, that's what we're talking about. Let me illustrate. Let's say you've got a two, three, four, five month old baby and that baby is throwing a fit about something. He can't get his bottle, he can't find his pacifier, whatever. Now we want to try to teach him, we want to try to help him, we want to try to do what we can, but that baby at that age, does he know it's wrong to act that way? Does he know that when uh, you take even a toddler and somebody steals his toy, you got a little toddler here and we're trying to teach him and somebody steals his toy and he just hauls off and waylays somebody over it, kid next to him. Well, that isn't right. And that is good, isn't good, and we want to teach him proper traits and characteristics, but are we going to say that kid is at the age of accountability, he's sinned, we better teach him right and wrong and get him in the water. He's accountable for that, and he's going to go to hell because he did that. Well, of course not. He's in an age of learning. He's in an age of training. But he's not to the point where we're going to say he's ready to refuse. He's at that point where he can refuse the evil and choose the good. He's in an age of learning and being trained, but not necessarily accountable for those sins in the eternal aspect of that. And so we've got to realize related to that. Now, let's ask another question as it relates to God's plan of salvation. In visiting with someone who may want to be baptized, we want to ask them, what do you understand? What do you know about the gospel plan of salvation? Now, let me illustrate it this way. And here's why this is so important. Let's say that somebody comes in off the street and they don't know anything about Christ. They don't know anything about the church. They don't know anything about the gospel. But they say, do you folks baptize people here? We say, well, sure, we baptize folks. They say, you know, I never really thought about it a whole lot, but I think I probably better go ahead and do that just to be safe. Doesn't know about Christ, really. Doesn't know about the plan of salvation. Doesn't know a whole lot. But just as a uh, get out of jail free, just as a safety idea, I think I'll go ahead and do it. Well, is that person ready? Is he a candidate to be baptized? Must you know certain things before you're ready to be baptized? And indeed, the scripture teaches you must. Ephesians 5 verse 17 says, Do not be ignorant but understand the will of the Lord. I've got to have an understanding of God's will as it relates to a plan of salvation. You've got to know the truth before the truth can make you free. When the, uh, John 8 verse 32, when the Ethiopian eunuch said, here's water, what hinders me? Was there any condition that Philip laid forth? Absolutely. If, that's a condition, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Was it essential before baptism that he understand, understood and was able to believe the message of salvation in Christ? Absolutely. And so, what does a person need to know? Do they know they're lost in sin? Friend, 
I, I truly believe if people, more people realized without Jesus, I am lost in sin, I am headed down the road to hell, and if I don't make my life right with God, I might spend eternity with the devil if I die this way. Do we really understand the personal responsibility and consequences of our sin? The wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. Do we really understand about the Lord's church and, and His plan of salvation? Uh, in Acts chapter 8, when they taught them about Christ, they taught them about the things concerning the kingdom. Acts chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. Do people understand? You're going to be added to the Lord's church. You've got to obey the plan of salvation and become a Christian to be right with God. And then we want to emphasize as Jesus clearly did in the Scripture, are you willing to change? You know, somebody has a, a problem, whatever that problem may be. That problem may be lying or stealing or cheating. Let's say a person has a problem with lying. And that person says, you know, I've, I've got this problem with lying, and I think I need to be baptized. Well, that's good that they're thinking about the plan of salvation, but we then say to them, are you willing to repent? He says, repent, what do you mean? Are you willing to stop lying? You know, I've never really thought about that. Let me think about it. Well, that person, my friend, if he's not willing to change his heart and his mind and let the Scripture convict him, if we're not willing to repent, then, friend, we're not a candidate for baptism. How do we know that? Listen to Acts 2.38 again. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Jesus said in Luke 13.3, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke 3, verse 6, John said to certain... Now listen to this. Here's a classic example. Certain religious elite... Looks like because everybody else is doing it. They came out to John to be baptized by him in the Jordan. And uh, John said this to him: You brood of vipers. What harsh language. You bunch of snakes in essence. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And then John said this. Bring forth fruits worthy... Of repentance. They were going out to do it because everybody else was, and John said, uh uh, you change your life and commit to making this decision before I'll baptize you. John refused to baptize them because they would not or had not repented and were not at the point of doing that before he was going to baptize them. And so, is repentance a part of something you've been considering before baptism? And then we surely want to consider this. Friend, have you counted the cost in obeying the gospel? Wouldn't you argue that anything that is really valuable usually has a cost involved in it? Any of us would agree that anything that's really, really important has some type of cost associated with that. Obedience to the gospel will cost you something. It'll cost you time. It'll cost you commitment. It'll cost you sacrifice, and it may cost you friends, family, jobs, and other things that one cannot continue in if he is going to obey the gospel and live true to Jesus. It may cost sacrifice. It may cause persecution. It may mean that some of your friends no longer like you. It may mean that the job that you have or you're popular, and that may not be the case anymore. We're not saying necessarily, but have you really considered the cost? Jesus taught us to count the cost. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. And friend, I'll assure you, whatever cost one may incur in obedience to the gospel, it's surely worth it for all that we can receive. Do you remember Romans 8, verse number 18? Paul said this, I consider the sufferings of this present world, they're not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Let's say I, I have to give up on some friends who've got some moral problems that I can't hang around anymore. Let's say that family no longer wants to associate with me because I don't do some of the things I used to do. Or let's say I receive persecution, even serious persecution. And there's a cost to it. Is that cost worth it? Absolutely. If heaven is going to be my eternal home, a place where there's no sorrow, pain, crying, death, and all these former things that we have here have passed away. Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. If I'm going to be with God, and if I can be with Christ for eternity, and if I can live a life of service to God and others, then friend, that's surely 
would be worth it. And so we hope today that you'll think about the things that are required and necessary to be baptized. And maybe you're thinking to yourself and maybe you're asking yourself, you know, was I really ready to be baptized when I obeyed the gospel? And if you didn't understand the right things, if the motivation, if you didn't do it for the right motive or, or have the knowledge that God requires, or, or maybe you didn't change your life and just wanted to do it to be popular, then friend, one needs to be immersed into Christ for the correct reasons. But as we think today about God's plan of salvation, friend, we want to make clear what God teaches one must do to be saved. You first have to hear the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10 verse 17, have we heard and made a commitment to the message of the gospel? If we have, do we really believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him, John 14, 6. If I believe Christ is the truth and the life and the way, am I willing to change my life and repent? Remember Acts 3, verse 19. Repent and turn again that your sins may be blotted out unless you repent. You'll all likewise perish. Luke chapter 13, verse number 3. Would you make that good confession? The Ethiopian eunuch said, Here's water, what hinders me? If you believe with all your heart you may, and he plainly said, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 through 38. And then, friend, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Listen to how plain Jesus made it. Jesus said, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, verse 16. Peter said, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Acts 2, verse 38. And our Lord said in John 3, verse 5, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so as we think about the plan of salvation and who's ready to obey the gospel, friend, we assure you, we want men and women to obey the gospel but we want them, God wants them, to be ready to make that commitment, to understand and know what they're doing, be of an accountable age so they can follow that up, so they can follow that great commitment up with being faithful unto death, giving God the glory with every day of their life. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your walk. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go. Gospel of Christ.